I was invited with a number of other people to be a witness for veterans who had gone through a, a very specific program to address moral injury. And in case you're not familiar with this term, let me just pull this up. Moral injury is the injury suffered in a traumatic or unusually stressful circumstance. People may perpetrate or fail to prevent or, or, or witness something that contradicts deeply held moral beliefs and expectations. And some of the participants in this particular event were in a, in a live auditorium and others mostly were on Zoom. We were given really very specific instructions about how we were going to participate and how this particular program was going to unfold. I think it was about a half hour of instructions and they were very careful to say, well, these are not commands, but they're instructions. And actually they, they kind of did feel like commands, but they were very, very deliberate. For example, when we were given the instruction, non-veterans at ease, that meant we turned our cameras off. And when they said non-veterans rise up, that meant we turned our cameras on. And now this instruction was also given to the veterans. Veterans at ease, their cameras went off. Veterans rise up, their cameras went on. And those in the auditorium would stand. And there was something so, so beautiful or powerful really moving to me in that moment when suddenly you just saw the gallery of the veterans. And then there we were, the non-veterans and civilians. And then there we all were holding this space together, coming together. All the veterans who were going to share um, were in the auditorium and, and some of the witnesses were also. We were instructed that when we had our cameras on, we be mindful of staying still, of not doing a lot of extraneous movements, not eating or drinking as our cameras were on, and keeping our hands visible. In other words, we were really requested to be attentive, to be attentive. Again, I, I just keep repeating this, the program was very deliberately structured. I will share with you some of the words that were, were scripted as part of a kind of a, a call and response. And these words were spoken from both the veterans and the non-veterans, if we chose to speak. The veterans said, we wanna come home. We want to share our wisdom and pain. We want to tell our truth and expose what has been concealed. We want to teach and lead our people in the ways of peace. And the chaplain who was facilitating this then asks the veterans, is this your story? And they together say, yes, this is our story. And then the non-veterans were invited again if we wanted to respond. And we said, yes, we are willing. We want you to come home. We want you to be better, to do better. We want to learn. We want to carry our fair share of the burden. What have we done to you? What have we done with you? What have we done to the people over there? And then 
a chaplain asks us, is this your story? And we say collectively together, yes, this is our story. And we hear in this scripted dialogue, the intention to deliberately turn toward something that is difficult. We hear the language of, of metta and, and loving kindness. It, it moves us from the language of you and me to a language of us. And Christina Feldman writes about metta and loving kindness in her book, Boundless Heart. I'll just read a little piece of it. Loving kindness, metta, teaches us my peace, happiness, and freedom is linked and interwoven with yours. In my confusion, fear, and sorrow is linked to and interwoven with yours. Metta teaches us to move from the language of you and me to a language of us. And oh boy, we need this. Those people over there are us. One young man spoke about what moral injury meant to him. And he said, it was like feeling completely lost, completely untethered, no, no bearings, and desperately looking outside for some some precious jewel that he couldn't find. He could never find it. And he couldn't find it in here. They told us some horrific stories. And they spoke about the very serious impact that these experiences had on their lives. The waves of addiction, depression, rage, hopelessness, and shame, and shame was a big one. Now, these experiences do not feel like guests in a guest house. They are devastating, and yet, and yet, they must be greeted with acceptance, care, patience, love, after each person spoke, we had the opportunity to respond to them. And, and you could imagine the words that we responded with were very encouraging, supportive, and kind. This whole experience was really being viewed with a kind through the gaze of kindness. These people in this program, they created their own holding environment. And they created a space where it was acceptable to be vulnerable and honest, a place where we could all admit culpability and share the responsibility, share that burden. So just like we are looking to take a closer look at experiences, feelings, behaviors that are difficult to look at, these veterans in this program are doing exactly the same thing. And just like we are orienting our hearts and minds to a posture of kindness, a posture of caring attention, that's what they're doing. For these veterans, it was an opportunity to come back from some very dark places. We know about dark places. We're learning how to hold them and how to attend to them. These holding environments are really important. The offering of refuge is important. These veterans said, we wanna come home. And we responded, we want you to come home. And the veteran said, we have difficult things to say. 
And we responded, we will listen. We all have difficult things to say, whether we're saying them to ourselves or to each other. We can do this at our own, our own pace. We're learning to listen. The holding environment is powerful and it's available to us. We come here together and make space alone and together to be just as we are. We come here to settle, to quiet, to be more intimate with awareness, safe enough to take our hands off the wheel even for a second and rest some. We've been given very deliberate handholds and supports, not commands, but deliberate supports from Bill and Susan and also from these teachings. We are holding space for each other and with each other, like the veterans. We wanna to continue to set up the foundations of our practice. So Susan said yesterday, so we can deepen and widen. We can deepen our capacity to hold and we can widen our capacity to hold and feel held. So, how do we do this? We practice, we sit again and again and again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.